Hey everybody, Jochen Haydn here, and I'm back with the uh, 12th December 1941 Turn 6 Combat Replay and Intel Analysis for the Helsin vs. Haydn uh, campaign. As far as what's going to happen this turn, I'm in completely uncharted territory. Uh, he's so far off script, I don't even know what to think or believe as to what's going on here. So, uh, some highlights here are we've got a few ships that we're trying to get out of Borneo down to Surabaya. We're trying to get some fuel off of Java. Uh, and we're just trying to get our act together down in Australia and all, all over the place. So anything goes right now. Let's just see what happens because I have no idea. Okay, and we're live with the 12th December turn. No idea what's going to happen here. All right, so Lang Kawi, he grabs that for free, just out of proximity. And we've got the, the unloadings at uh, New Guinea. Ooh, whoa! <laughs> the Legazpi, this is out of um, Philippines. I have it retreating back towards Surabaya. Somehow miraculously dodges a torpedo from the uh, I-123. That's not common for Japanese subs to miss uh, small cargo ships like that. I'm pretty happy. But that does tell us that we have Japanese subs operating in the Makassar Strait. Okay, so this is us. We pinned down the I-168, but nothing came of it. So this is just near um, Pearl, Har Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. No night strikes. Okay, some more unloadings at New Guinea. That's that's to be expected. Mm-hmm. Pretty, pretty all, all standard stuff right now. Uh, uh, oh, pucker factor, man. Man, ever since we lost a Farragut last turn, I'm I get nervous now when I see my my destroyers going up against a Japanese sub. So this is the I-168. The hull is dropping um, depth charges on it. It doesn't look like we're gonna get much out of this. And that's it. He's out of ammo. So that's it for that. We he fires four torpedoes at the hull, the I-168, and misses. Thank goodness. Okay, now we're air. Now we got the air phase here. Hmm. He's really spotting our aircraft here. Kate's. What has he got B5N Kate's doing that for? Interesting. Okay, looks like he's got a pretty decent amount of recon going on in our ships near Rangoon. Okay, a little sweep here. An attack on Temelo, and he's targeting the airfield, it looks like. Alright, and he's targeting that to keep us from building fortifications there. Oh, okay. Now we're going after Hong Kong. Okay, so we have heavy rain in the hex, so that's going to be good for us this this game and this turn. Uh, he's also coming in kind of high, 11,000 feet. He's trying to avoid our flak, but from this altitude, he's probably not going to hit much. And this is a ground attack. He's not attacking the base, he's attacking the troops. Big raid, another big raid here. Again, the the heavy rain is helping us out here. Alright, now he's using his Tojos to sweep. Maybe he thought we were going to have some sort of cap over Hong Kong. Alright, now he's bombing this this unit on the ground here, Hawaii Not. Because Hawaii Not, we can't get escort there, it's too far away. So he can bomb this for free. Doesn't do a lot of damage though, despite the large raids. Probably the, the weather. And he's coming in low, which is what I would do for a unit like this. But I guess the weather really... Uh, hampered him this turn. Okay, another raid on Hong Kong. He's trying to soften it up. That's what he's doing here. He's attacking the troops to try to disrupt them because I think he's going to go for an attack in Hong Kong. 
Okay. Alright, so he's attacking these guys on the road here, trying to knock him out of move mode probably. Because he's going to move this unit to block the road and take the troops out, so. He's trying to slow us down. Oh, wow. Okay, so now he's sweeping over a Chung King at 20,000 feet, which is the maximum allowable altitude given our rule set in this campaign. Uh, I'm really surprised that he's using so many zeros to do that. What Did he think that we'd have a bunch of cap up or something? I, I don't really know what the point of that was, but... It's it's kind of bold. I, you don't see Japanese players going after Chung King very often, especially on the 12th of December. Uh, interesting. Okay, this is just a bombing raid on uh, Alor Star. Nothing came of it. Probably a little too high. Okay, get some zeros sweeping over this in case we were flying cap for them. 10,000 feet. Okay, now we're going into the PM phase. One of our subs was attacked by a bunch of ants, but I'm sure at this point in the in the campaign, his ASW pilots were as bad as mine, so they probably didn't do much to that, if anything. Okay, raid north of... Uh, Low Yang here, probably trying to slow us down. A really small fragmented raid hitting these guys, just again to slow them down. Same thing here, south of Ching, Cheng Chao. Wow, that's a big raid. 50 Bettys, and these are coming out of Takao. So he's really targeting our troops. Ah, and the Nell raid on top of that. That's, man. I would be really surprised if Hong Kong held this turn with all this bombing that we've taken. It's very disruptive to the troops. And if their disruption level gets high due to these bombing raids, it can affect their combat efficiency when they actually have to fight. A lot of recon. A lot of recon everywhere here. Every time you hear that camera click is a successful recon mission for him. Okay, another sweep. So, he appears to have the equivalent of almost two full Zero fighter squadrons in China. And you notice he's only using the Zeros and the Tojos and not the Nates. Oh! Uh, uh, uh. Okay, so the Destroyer Mind Layer C-Card is at Johnson Atoll doing some business. And uh, looks like he's got the I-173. Kind of positioned there, try to intercept us. Oh, I-174 is at Palmyra, and the and the destroyer mine layer Breeze is there doing something as well, and we dodge some torps. But okay, so the I-173 sister ship is at Palmyra, and this is telling us that he's doing exactly the same thing that Lodric did. He's putting subs at all of our big uh, South Pacific islands to just try to catch stuff coming in. It's very, very, very annoying. Okay, so we got a shock attack here, and I'm sure this unit will be blasted out. And it was, but there wasn't much left to it anyway. Oh, here we go to Hong Kong. Let's see how this goes. Watch these numbers. If you see these all drop to zero and you start seeing units fall off, then we're done for. Well, well, we held out. 
interesting. So we lose a fortification level. He, we do take more losses than he does in terms of destroyed squads. But, you know, we held out, which is really surprising. So we know for a fact he's got two full infantry divisions, two infantry regiments, three infantry regiments, and about eight artillery units. That's that's a decent-sized force, 941 AV. We held. I can't believe it. Oh, here comes the Invincible Tank Regiment from the Japanese. And they win, of course. And they take no losses, again. So uh, apparently Japanese tanks are made out of selenium or something, in, and they're impervious to any sort of damage from us. So we take a lot of casualties, retreat to Temelo, and he wins the Hex for no loss at all. Okay, a shock attack at Victoria Point. And no surprise, he'll take it. Interestingly enough, the unit is still alive, but not for long. Okay, so that's basically it. Got some fortifications coming up here. And then it's going to run through its end of turn stuff like the production phase, supply, aircraft um, replacement, all that stuff. And then here's what we'll get to see here shortly if we get any kind of reinforcements on the map this turn. There's some stuff moving around. These are no these are not new. Okay, A A Artie and Infantry Regiment. Alright, so we got two AA units, an Artie Regiment. And an infantry regiment. So let's uh, let's take a look at the numbers here and see what all happened exactly. Okay, we're back and let's analyze our situation. And we'll, as always, we'll start with the the intelligence report here. So we'll start with aircraft losses for the day. So definitely much in our favor. It's one to eight. So. Uh, I suspect the bulk of his losses are almost entirely ops losses because he had a lot of sorties flown today, a lot of bombing missions. So he lost two Sallies, a Babs, which is a recon plane, a Mavis, which I'm always glad to see those things go. They're dangerous. A Betty, a Nell, a Babs, which is also uh, like the Army equivalent or the a Navy equivalent of the the Army's recon plane. And a Zero. We lose one Lodestar. A Lodestar which is one of our uh, transport planes. So 1 to 8, I'd take those numbers any day. Top pilots, so the one Lodestar we lost was the pilot was killed, and that's a Dutch pilot. Um, let's see, Army lost points definitely clicked up quite a bit due to our, our ground losses in China and uh, the grounded combat in Hong Kong as well as in uh, Malaya. But we'll, we'll, we'll breeze over those when we look at the map. Ship sunk last turn, nothing. Which, shocking, uh, at least four of his submarines fired at us and didn't hit anything, which is pretty abnormal for a Japanese sub. Even that AKL in the, the uh, Makassar Strait dodging a torpedo is surprising. So uh, I, I can't be upset about not losing a ship this turn. We've lost enough, right? <sighs> okay, so we can take a look real quick at aircraft reinforcements. We're going to be getting some... These are units that I'm transferring to Wagga Wagga. Wagga Wagga. Uh, looks like we're going to get a bowling broke in Canada. The Australia is coming in. A, B, uh, a bolo unit at Pearl. A couple other stuff coming in Bandoang. Oh, this is good. Uh, in five days, we're going to get this Kingfisher unit. And in eight days, we're getting more. And basically, these Kingfisher units are all you're going to get for a while for Navy aircraft to train Navy pilots, at least for several months. So you can actually use these to train fighter pilots, ASW, naval surge. You can use them for more or less anything except torpedo attacks. So I'll be putting these guys to work, probably training fighter pilots to start because we just don't have any extra aircraft to do that in the Navy. All right. 
Uh, let's see here. Ship availability. Uh, nothing tomorrow, but in, in the next couple days, we're going to get the Australian Sydney, which is a heavy cruiser, a tanker at Abaddon. Uh, this is all Sims class destroyers. This might be the entire flight of them, I think, or most of them. So I can definitely put these guys to use. I love the Sims class destroyers. Uh, in the game, they're they're okay, but I just really have an affinity towards them because they're a really cool class of ships. Uh, and also, uh, when I used to play World of Warships, the Sims was one of my favorite um, destroyers. My one of my paid pay word destroyers because it was just so maneuverable and and it could slice and dice so well before it got power crept. But yeah, I really like Sims class destroyers. If you can't tell. All right, let's take a look at China. Uh, nothing really substantial to report here. Ooh, where's this guy going? Northwest. I want him to go here. So all of this is going according to plan, all right? I'm moving these aircraft south. Uh, interesting, he did sweep over Chongqing last turn. I don't know why. And we have a lot of aircraft here, and they're all training. But you know, uh, these pilots are not in a condition to be doing anything, especially trying to, to protect against thirty-five zeros, which is just ridiculous. But other than that, our retreat is going more or less according to plan. Just fixing something while I see it. Uh, this unit's going to be cut off. These guys are going to get cut off. I should be able to get all these out. It's going to be really close if we actually get out of here. I don't think we will. Um, this unit's going to get caught up to by this one because he keeps bombing us and slowing us down right and he's on the better road so he'll probably beat us here and take this unit out as well and it is what it is the rest of these guys i'm going to have fall back to wen chow we're going to put up our our defense there little fortress wen chow action right all we can do is build forts there at the moment i am trying to stock as much, much supplies i can because i want to hold out here because it's really good terrain, and we can use this base if we can keep it alive for quite a while. And I'm expecting to get about 800 AV into this thing, maybe more. And that would take a lot of Japanese troops to reduce. So that's what we're going to do here. Uh, here in Hong Kong, we amazingly held out. Uh, the disruption levels were very low. Uh, so his bombing raid was ineffective, to say the least. They did... they. I think this uh, this coastal defense, this Hong Kong fort, soaked up a lot of the damage, and the actual units that need to be mobile did did not take a lot of uh, casualties here. So we may be able to hold out another turn or two. I'm thinking. So cool. We'll, we'll take Hong Kong every day that we can. Coming around here. Nothing substantial to report in Rangoon other than the fact that we are getting some supplies into there. And he sees all of them coming. And check that out. He's already, already moving troops towards um, Rabang. He's not wasting any time at all. He's already on the way into Rangoon. See this? He's going to start coming down this road, and he'll take Mole Mine, and he'll have Rangoon before you know it. He's moving so fast. It's faster than I can get my troops in there, that's for sure. Nothing substantial to report in India. We're still trying to get uh, stuff moved into Rangoon. Not Rangoon, Calcutta, because I'm going to be building that up, because I don't think we're going to have... Uh, we're not going to have much of a... Of a, of a battle in Burma. He's just going to blow us out so fast. So we need to start fortifying India. Because that's where he's coming. Alright. But we'll work on building up the, the airfields. And all that stuff. I'm moving engineers and everything. In that way to try to get Calcutta built up. And we'll start building up the rest of the stuff. As we get time. And but Burma I just don't see it holding out. We're never going to get enough troops in there. Especially when he's already on a move like this. Jeez. He won a Victoria Point this turn. 
he won here. So he's definitely on the move in in Malaya. And you see here, he has successfully made it into Johor Baru. So next turn, he will take this base. These guys will retreat into Singapore. He will follow them in and take this within a week. Uh, check the date. I think he will have Singapore on or before December 20th, which is just unbelievable, right? Uh, everything else in the Dutch East Indies is going pretty good. We do have this unit moving west, and it unfortunately is a very large unit. Uh, these are heavy cruisers, a light cruiser, and some destroyers, and they're coming to interdict shipping. So we'll, we'll watch that, but there's not going to be much we're going to be able to do to stop it. In the meantime, I'm just trying to get these ships into Balak Poppin. Uh, the Lega Legazpi is the ship that got torpedoed around here last turn, but dodged it. Okay. Uh, we did get our... We did get our ships into Terracan, and they're safe here because we've got mines, and we've got some pretty gnarly coastal defense batteries in place here. So he won't be coming into this hex anytime soon, but what we have to do is wait this guy out because if he's going to be praying through here, I don't want to lose to Houston and these three destroyers to him because we have nothing that can stop this guy. So we're just going to have to kind of hang out. At least we got good good um, visibility on this, though. I'm, I believe the accuracy of this report because it's specific. A light cruiser, four heavy cruisers, two destroyers. That seems plausible to me that he would have a composition like that. So I trust this intelligence. It's good enough. Okay. And we have no shortage of naval search in the area. So uh, we have overlapping naval search. So this is good intel. So let's load up some fuel on this guy, because why not, right? We continue to move fuel out of Tachilat Jap. We've got quite a bit here. These guys are loading up real nice. So guess what? We're going to dock this guy, load some fuel. Good stuff, man. I'm really happy with how much fuel we're getting out. We got another 17,000 that we're pulling out here. This guy, check this out. We're going to load up some fuel here. We're going to suck this thing empty of, of fuel by the time I'm done. And this is something that I did not do in the the Lodra campaign. I don't know what I was thinking. I just didn't do it. And honestly, I really regret it because like I could have gotten way more fuel out of there than what we did. But this time around, we should get a couple hundred thousand fuel out of Java, out of Sumatra. And uh, we can get that all in Australia right from the get-go. Look at all these ships that we've got moving down there. All right, and it's going so well that I'm actually moving ships back up. Look at this. We're heading in because I like the minefields I've got here, here, and here. Um, so, yeah, let's do it. Let's get some fuel out of here. If there's zero fuel left in, in Surabaya when I'm done, I'll be really happy with that. But we're getting well over 100k out so far and i'm proud of that fact in australia things are coming along you see we got a conga line of troops heading to perth because uh just in case uh helson decides he wants to go after australia instead i need to fortify perth because this is the only base that's really worth anything on this whole part of australia he can take all the rest of these i don't really care to include darwin but i need perth Right, and I need these bases, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna fortify Perth, and we'll be ready for him when he comes, eventually. Uh, same things going on over here. We're just moving ships around, reconsolidating. I've already got things going down in Nemea. We're gonna have some ASW activity here. Pago Pago is in, in desperate need of supply, and I know for a fact that he's got a sub here. Look at this sub. Look at the detection level. See that? Seven out of seven. He's got a sub here. So we got to be very careful getting uh, supply ships into this thing. So we know for certain that he's got subs at Palmyra, but if you take a look here, 
I just dropped some mines here, right? Um, I'm, I'm hoping the sub runs into one. Also at a uh, at um, Johnston Island, I laid some mines here as well, hoping that we can catch a sub and take it out. Because I do have some supplies coming in that we really need. That I'm going to leave all these guys in place here. Mine laying. We're going to remain on station. And we're going to change this into an ASW combat. Right? Now that the mine laying is done. Boom. Make sure these guys don't want to refuel. Okay. So I need to get supplies in here. I think we've got this locked down and maybe he'll run into a mine too. And that's the plan as well at Canton. See this? I'm going to send some mines down to Canton as well. Hoping that we can catch one of his subs being silly. If he runs into two mines, he's finished. All right. So we also had a lot of... ASW activity and some and some things going down with the subs here. I'm getting really antsy about this, so I think Yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and call this guy off for the time being. There's nothing further to be gained by doing that stuff. Yeah, we're gonna all these ASW combat ships we're gonna Go ahead and disband them for now and keep them as escorts for when we need them later on. Just not interested in losing any more for no reason. We'll use them we'll use them when we have to, but we're not gonna do recreational um ASW stuff just for fun. We're never gonna hurt his subs like that. Uh what I am gonna do though is check this out. Uh, we can definitely upgrade these guys now. Yeah, let's upgrade this one. And upgrade this one and we can get their ASW ratings up to four and these are going to be some actually pretty decent ASW ships after that so we'll, we'll get working on that next turn uh, no ships really in repair we're just converting this one into a troop ship um, we can take a look at some repairs in Sir Bias since we're already here we have some time uh, we'll have another duck sub coming up in a couple days here in one day the Vendetta has got to work down this major damage. Stronghold's got to work down that major damage, right? And all, you know what? I think that Jupiter's going to make it. Last turn, I recall this being 58. And it's down to 55, so that means that the, the damage control parties are actually getting the upper hand on... On the situation, and I really would love to save this J class. Look at the ASW rating they've got: eight weapons, and it has radar. So this is a great destroyer, and I don't want to lose it. So I think we have a good chance of actually, you know, recovering this ship. If we can keep ticking that down below fifty, we're set. And taking a look here, um, these are ships in the shipyard. The Electra will be up in, in one turn. The Isis in three. The Hermes is just doing some, some light repair work. In fact, we can probably move this down to... Well, let me see. No, we'll leave it like that. It's already in the shipyard. The Encounter has got five days and it's back to, back to work. And then here's the Repulse. This is... I, I'm keeping it in readiness right now because I just... I'm just nervous about having to get it out of here in a hurry. So um, we're in readiness, but basically docked, and I have it at critical, and we should start working on the system damage pretty quickly. Get this down to below 50, and then we can move it elsewhere if we want to. But, yeah, I'm really happy that 4C is still alive because these, are, these two ships, the Prince of Wales and the Repulse, can be very useful re repelling an invasion of India when the time comes. Uh, on the west coast, we're just kind of consolidating, getting ships where they need to get. 
We got a bunch of escort ships that just arrived here, so we'll disband those. Plenty of KVs, which are outstanding uh, ASW platforms. Okay, so we'll disband that. Uh, let's see how we're doing up here. Yep, everything's going good at the sub base. We definitely need to worry about getting some... Uh, we got to get some supply out here, but we should be doing that soon. Let me see if this guy's actually heading over. Yeah, this guy's got some supply and troops to get ADAC started. And over here, we've got our... Our seaplane tender, a repair ship, and our sub tender, and that will make ADAC a fully functional sub base right off the bat. So we'll have that going soon. And the rest of these ships are kind of just moving around, getting ADAC set up. So I think that's our turn. We can go ahead and quickly go through the ops report. I'm just going to breeze through it quickly, and I'll point out anything that looks noteworthy in case it's a little pixelated on your end. Uh, a lot of these are sighting reports. Yeah, a lot of sighting reports. That's almost all of these. Okay, nothing nothing really noteworthy here. Looking at SIGINT. Uh, let's see here. Heavy radio transmissions are at Tokyo. Let's see if we can see anything there. Not really. Heavy radio transmissions at Camran Bay. Nothing noteworthy other than they have units there. So, uh, you know, not much to talk about here. Quiet turn. I'll take it. Um... I've got some stuff to work on, but in the meantime, everything's status quo. We just we're just recon reconsolidating and getting things moved around is all we're really doing here. So, um, you know, and then also you notice that he's not attacking Clark. So in the meantime, we can get this repaired and start building things up again. Yeah, you know, everything's going okay here. So. You know, all that's left to say is thanks for supporting uh, me and Helson. Um, I'll get this turned back to him maybe by Saturday or, or even tomorrow night at, at the worst, and we'll keep this going. But it's going to be quiet probably for a few days while everybody kind of gets their act together and gets uh, reset after the initial few days of, of torture that I endured. Um, but yeah, you know, I just got to move stuff around and get ready. Get ready for the onslaught because it's coming. I will leave you... With one last thing, my submarine at Baton, the porpoise, right? Save the hashtag, save the porpoise. The only survivor from the um, the bombing of uh, Manila, the only sub. So already it's in a condition where we could sail this back to Pearl, but I'd like to get the damage down a bit more to get more speed out of this because one hex will take forever. Pearl or even Surabaya, but yeah, we need to get this thing fixed up. But in 17 days, it'll be in a, in a situation where we can do that. Anyway, that's all I got. I'll catch you guys in the next one.